Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how you can uh, enter data into Excel and use Excel to manipulate and process that data. Okay, so we have our data that we're given here. So the first thing that we need to do is enter the titles into Excel. Now if we do this and set this up um, correctly to start with, it'll make it much easier and we can then import it directly into our word processing document while we're writing up our lab report. Okay. So trial one. Okay, now I've left one space between average and uncertainty, and we'll get to why that is later. Uh, for the moment, we can see we've got our distance, trial one, two, three. Okay, if we go back to Excel and we notice that times range from 0.25 of a second right down to 2.5 seconds. So, obviously, the experimenter was uh, measuring the distance that the ball travels when it's being dropped at 0.25 second time intervals. So if we go back here, we can say that the first one is 0.25, the next one is 0.5. And Excel is quite magic at this. It works out the difference between these two values. And if you go down to the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that the mouse cursor becomes a small cross. And you just click on that cross and you can drag down until we get down to 2.5. So there we go. Things are working. Quite well, let me just zoom in there, it might be a little easier to see. So let me just quickly do that again. Move those data values, highlight both of those, click down in the right hand corner and when the, the cursor becomes a black cross and drag down until it says 2.5. So we don't have to enter them individually, thank goodness. Okay, the next step is we need to enter our data in directly. Now, there's no way around this. You need to enter it in step by step. And that's just going to take some time. There's no way to get by that. Luckily, however, I've already spent the time doing that. So I can just put the, the data straight in. Once again, let me zoom in on that. 0.25 and 0.5. So you're going to have to write that in, unfortunately, the values for each trial. Uh, however, we'll then begin the next step from there. So go ahead, put those values in, and then come back to the video and watch on from here. here. Okay, uh, so now what we need to do is we've got our three trials here. We want to calc calculate the average for these three trials. Now you can sit down with your calculator and do each one step by step. takes a little time. The lucky thing about this is Excel already has this function built in, so it's pretty easy to use. Now just when using a formula in Excel, you need to just put equals value, which means that this cell will be equal to a certain formula. Excel already has the average formula, it comes up if you type in average. As you can see, uh, you put the open bracket in, you'll see here that it says number one, um, colon number two. So we can just click here, we want to take the average of these three values. So highlight these three values. Now it says B3 to D3. Notice that this is from cell B3 and this is cell D3. So the average of those three cells. Press enter and it gives you the average. Once again, click um, down here and drag that down and it gives you the average for each cell. Now notice that Excel already knows that when you drag down that it needs to shift its reference cells that it's doing the calculations from down by one row each time. Okay, so we're, we're doing well so far. Okay, the next step, we want to build in the uncertainty here. Now, if we remember how we calculate our uncertainty, we simply took the maximum value, subtract the minimum value, and then we multiplied that by half or divided it by two. Either way, it's the same thing. We can do that once again and press equals. We want to take the maximum value. So Excel is able to find the maximum value from a set of numbers. So the maximum of those three values. So track the minimum of these three values. 
and uh, sorry, put a closing bracket on that, parentheses, and then we just want to take all of this value in parentheses once again and divide it by two. And we get our value here. Once again, we just click down in the bottom right hand corner and it calculates each one for us. Perfect. So this is all happening very quickly. Next thing we've got to remember that uncertainties are not certain. So we shouldn't really be quoting them accurately. In fact, we should only quote them to one figure, one significant figure. In this case, that should be 0.3. So we need to round this off. Okay, so that's quite simple. We just highlight them all by pressing, clicking on one, holding down shift and clicking at the bottom of the column. Then you want to right click on a Mac, that's control. On a PC, it's a right click. And then I want to go down to the Format Cells option. Uh, I want to tell Excel that I'm dealing with numbers here and that I want to go down to one decimal place. Press OK and it rounds it off automatically for us. Perfect now. But now we have a problem once again. Our average should match the de number of decimal places as of our uncertainty. So. It makes no sense that our average is more accurate than our uncertainty. So once again, we need to highlight these. In fact, all of these cannot go past one decimal place. So we click all of these values, go down to format cells, click number, and we'll take it all down to one decimal place. Now we can see that we're consistent across all our data. All distances were, were measured the same way to the same level of accuracy. The average matches the, the level of accuracy of the distance values and the uncertainty and the average um, represent uh, or are all consistent in terms of the number of decimal places. Okay, so why do I leave this blank column here? Well, it's just a little trick so that we can show that we've got our plus or minus value. So we can say here's our three trials, here's our average, plus or minus our uncertainty here. So we just want to put in that plus or minus uh, symbol in there. So in order to do that, go to insert symbol. Let me preset this up. So, oh, there we go. There it is, plus or minus. Just click that once, press enter. Now notice that this won't change by numbers. So once again, I can just click down the bottom and drag it down. I'll just replicate that cell. Okay, so it looks a little weird now, but that doesn't matter. We're dealing with Excel, so once we put it into Word, we'll be sorted out. Last thing to do here is make these consistent. Now notice that the time is measured accurately to the second decimal place, or one one hundredth of a second. So uh, it makes no sense here to have one second if we were actually measuring to one one hundredth of a second. So we just need to once again make that consistent in terms of the number of decimal places. So right click, go to format cells, number, in this case, two decimal places. Okay, done. So our numbers are now consistent. Our whole data table is built and it didn't take us very long at all. In fact, you may have as many as 10 trials Sometimes uh, a scientist may take thousands of, of um, pieces of data that they must manipulate. Um, sometimes even millions. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to place it into, into our word um, processing document. It'll be part of our lab report. So in order to do that, then we want to format it so it looks neat, proper, perfect. And then we're going to get full marks for this. Okay, so. Let's just go to a new document, uh, back to Excel. I'll just simply highlight all this. Uh, Control C or copy. Let me copy. Paste in here. Press, oh, sorry about that. Go edit to paste. Okay, so we're in here. Now, this is not looking very professional, not kind of the level that you would expect to see in a proper scientific report. So what we need to do here is just quickly format it a little better. So the first thing we want to do is uh, highlight it and we'll notice we see some white sections in here. Excel and Word still deal together as a table. So that's pretty cool. So we can just right click onto this, 
go down to borders and shading we want to add all our borders in press OK OK so this is working well so far OK so this is starting to look better we know that this distance value actually spans for all of the trials at the average including the uncertainty so we click all of those press control merge cells the time spans these two cells so we can go to merge cells here once again now, because we've got this plus minus here, we don't really need to label this as uncertainty, so I'm going to remove that. Once again, I'm going to go to Merge Cells, and just to make these values a little closer, I'm going to bring that in as close as it can get. I'm just going to drag the whole table, make it a little smaller, and I'm going to bring these across to the left, so it looks great. Okay. So now I've got these values in, it looks a little strange at the moment. Next thing I can do is just highlight these, go down to border and shading, and sorry, remove those mi middle borders so it looks like a professionally written average, which is for the three trials 0.5 plus or minus 0.3. This looks very good now. Last thing I would do just to tidy it up is to go sell, to align all the words so that they're centered. Uh, I'll probably just center all the data as well, except for these ones. Let's do the same thing once again. Alignment, align center. Great, we're nearly finished. Let's type it in as table one and give it a descriptive title. In this case, um, it's, a, it's about a ball dropping. Oh, hang on here as well we might want to use the plus or minus insert notice here we've got the symbol as well it's right there no, it's not wanting us to do it so we just need to click there then click plus or minus 0 0.05 and then seconds okay so we've got our values there everything's looking good maybe just bold bow so good table one okay we need a descriptive title um, the relationships between a ball dropping and the distance that it falls under the influence of gravity so the relationship in a ball falling under ah, oh, 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 oh. when the distance a ball Falls under the influence of the time it takes. Okay, pretty bad title, whatever the case. That's fine, it's a descriptive title. Usually just to make it a little different to the body, I might just use italics there, which you might see in some reports. Okay, so there we're done. We're done with the dub table. Took us a few minutes, but it's all uh, processed now, ready to go. Should get its full marks on our lab report. Thanks very much for watching.